The connection that exists between a mother and her offspring is so powerful that it has the ability to soothe troubled spirits and mend broken hearts. The Og family was informed that one of their twins, Jamie, had passed away shortly after birth. On March 25, 2010, Jamie and Emily were born two minutes apart from each other. A couple from Queensland would not release their son and instead clutched him to keep him warm. After what seemed like an eternity, Jamie finally opened his eyes and started gasping for air. The twins are going to reach five years old, and to this point, they've not experienced any health problems. After the doctors had given up hope of her premature baby being saved, distraught mother Katie Ogg was given one last opportunity to say farewell to her child. Kate and David Ogg, who were first-time parents, were devastated when they were informed that one of their twins, who'd been born two minutes apart at just 26 weeks, had stopped breathing and only had a few minutes to live. Kate begged to be able to touch the lifeless infant, and she instructed David to climb into the hospital bed so that they could give the child a delicate embrace. She believed that it was the last time they'd be able to spend with the baby boy, whom they had already agreed to name Jamie. What followed was nothing short of a miracle, and it couldn't have been predicted. The infant started to move while he was being held tenderly by his mother, and his breathing became steadier as he did so. The medical personnel at the hospital raced to his rescue, and together they were able to revive the infant. After five years have passed, Jamie Ogg is a healthy and content child. The most difficult aspect of his traumatic introduction to the world is that he has a younger brother who boasts to anyone who will listen that their older brother used to be dead but is now alive. The Queensland couple were overjoyed to learn that they were going to be the parents of twins, specifically a boy and a girl, following years of unsuccessful attempts to have children. They were only six months into their pregnancy when they found out themselves in the delivery room, facing the possibility of premature babies. On March 25, 2010, Jamie came into the world first, and two minutes later, his sister Emily joined the world. They were both born and call, however, Jamie did not cry out when the sack was opened. According to what Miss Ogg told Daily Mail Australia, Emily let out a loud sob. Around 20 people were present in the room when we looked around and saw that everyone was congregating around Jamie. The energy wasn't all that positive. According to the opinions of several experts, a baby's heart rate can be controlled through skin-to-skin -skin contact. After the baby's born, it's recommended for moms to immediately engage in skin-to-skin -skin contact with their newborn so they can properly welcome their child into the world. The Oggs, Kate and David, have a particularly strong connection to this moment. The labor and delivery process is a difficult and tiring period for the newborn baby. The organization UNICEF encourages women to hold their child in skin-to-skin -skin contact as a way to facilitate adaptation to their new surroundings for their infants. It indicates that their heartbeat and respiration will be better managed, and there's a large body of evidence that says babies who are kept in skin-to-skin -skin contact are less stressed by the process of giving birth. The following is an excerpt from the recommendation made by UNICEF. We know that babies who have spent an hour in skin contact are significantly less stressed after the birth experience. This means that their breathing and heart rate are more stable, that they cry less, and that when they start to feed, they digest their food better. A mother's chest area is much warmer than others of her body, and this is a serious risk since it's ready to welcome her new baby and prevent them from cooling down. Your baby's been lovely and warm in your uterus at around 37 degrees, whereas the labor room will be significantly cooler, and he's wet. It's like getting out of the swimming baths. You would need to get dry and warm as quickly as possible, the labor and delivery nurse said. Your baby's been in a nice warm environment in your uterus. The necessity of direct skin-to-skin -skin contact was again emphasized by Caroline Davey, chief executive officer at the Bliss Charity for Premature Babies. She stated that it should be an integral aspect of the care that all babies receive, and that it's an essential part of family-centered care. Miss Davy continued by saying, Evidence shows that it can help to regulate the baby's heartbeat, lower their stress levels, and can play a vital part in increasing the favorable outcomes for premature babies. It was almost as if his heartbeat had stopped and he'd stopped breathing. After a period of 20 minutes, they decided to stop working on him. The physician approached Miss Ogg and her partner in the hospital room and inquired as to whether or not they had decided on a name for their child. After that, he shared the news with them that there was nothing else they could do to rescue Jamie.
I heard him gasp, but the doctor stated there was nothing that could be done. I removed Jamie from the doctor's care and urged everyone else to vacate the premises, she explained. He was cold, and I just wanted to make sure that he was comfortable. We had tried for years to have children, and I felt like such a failure each time we failed. I only desired to hug and kiss him. I took him out of his wrappings and instructed my husband to remove his shirt before climbing into bed with us. I know it sounds dumb, but if he was still gasping, there was still a sign of life, so I wasn't going to give up quickly. We were attempting to persuade him to remain with us. We told him his name, that he had a twin and that he needed to watch out for, and how hard we had tried to get our hands on him. He took a sharp breath in, and then he opened both of his eyes. He was breathing and had his hand on Dave's finger at the same time. If we had let the doctor to leave the room with Jamie, there's a good chance that he would have passed away. Jamie and Emily are about to turn five years old, and their parents have only just started telling them the incredible story. Miss Ogg stated that Emily started crying, that she was really distressed, and that she couldn't stop clutching Jamie. They enjoy reminiscing about when they were just young children. They have a younger brother named Charlie, and Charlie's the type of person who will tell anyone who will listen. He'll say, I was the chubby one at birth, while my twin siblings were the lean ones. Jamie, who had also been dead, has been brought back to life. Surprisingly, Jamie has not experienced even a single health issue in the five years that have passed since his birth. Miss Ogg stated that he is totally well and that the biggest concern that we had was cerebral palsy due to lack of oxygen, but there's been nothing. I can't even fathom how incredible it is. Because of everything that's happened, you'll appreciate them much more. The Ogg family has established an online community called Jamie's Gift with the intention of routinely raising donations for the Miracle Babies Foundation, which is an organization that provides assistance to newborns who are born prematurely or who are ill. To help raise money, Dave is presently preparing for an Ironman triathlon that will take place in May in Port Macquarie. Miss Ogg stated that she'll challenge his body by swimming 3.8 kilometers, cycling 180 kilometers, and running a marathon. Kangaroo care was something that David and Kate were working on. It's possible that premature babies won't have access to incubators in the world's more impoverished nations. When a newborn is held close to his or her mother or father, the proximity generates heat for the baby in a manner analogous to that experienced by a kangaroo joey in its mother's pouch. This started in Bogota, Colombia, where there was a scarcity of incubators, which led to the deaths of up to 70% of preterm babies. The mother proceeded to cuddle each child against her own body after that. According to the findings of the research, premature infants who were delivered 10 weeks early were going home within 24 hours. Up addition to this, the infant's breathing and heart rates were more consistent, and they took in a greater quantity of oxygen. Both the survival rate and the weight growth were significantly improved. The effect of the hug is one that lasts for a longer period of time. A study that was carried out 20 years later found that these youngsters had higher earnings, better organized sleep patterns, and a greater quantity of cerebral gray matter in their brains. Hugs have a lot of power. Hugs and other forms of physical contact are vital to maintaining both one's physical and mental health from the moment of birth until the day of death. Babies who were not allowed to be held or cuddled by their caregivers had cognitive and developmental impairments, attachment issues, and a higher chance of developing serious illness as they got older. As they got older, some individuals develop personality issues that make it challenging for them to function normally in society. The primary mode of conveying compassion is through physical contact. All age groups can stand to improve their immune systems, stress levels, and sleep quality as a direct result of this practice. It does not have any negative consequences, but rather it gives you more energy. Different cultures place different importance on physical contact at different intervals. A study was conducted by psychologist Sidney Garrard that examines the amount of touch between friends in different countries. In England, there was no physical contact between people, whereas in the United States, friends would touch each other up to twice an hour. On the other hand, in France, friends touch up to 110 times an hour, and in Puerto Rico, the figure reached up to 180 times in an hour. We are wired in such a way that being hugged makes us feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Oxytocin, which is produced by your pituitary gland, is the primary chemical that's responsible for causing these feelings. In turn, oxytocin lowers both blood pressure and cortisol, the hormone associated with stress. 
The act of physical touching another person causes an elevation in the levels of several neurotransmitters, most notably dopamine and serotonin. Dopamine is responsible for both the euphoric high and the incentive it bestows. Dopamine deficiency has been linked to a number of disorders, including Parkinson's and depression. Serotonin is a neurotransmitter that helps regulate feelings and flows when you have a sense that you're significant or important. Low levels have been linked to feelings of isolation as well as depression. Hugs have been shown to promote health, happiness, and relaxation, as well as the quality of relationships between people. There is, however, a catch to this offer. It must be a nice hug, and one of the requirements for a good hug is that it must be maintained for at least 20 seconds. It's not necessary for you to offer each other such a lengthy embrace every time you see each other. You should save the long, comforting hugs for those very special occasions or for times when you can tell that your friends or family members need the kind of deep embrace that you're capable of giving them. The Free Hugs Campaign is a social movement in which individuals deliver hugs to complete strangers in public areas. Hugs are offered by participants for free. Hugs are supposed to be spontaneous acts of kindness, actions of selflessness done solely with the intention of making the feelings of others better.